Manchester United, of course, managing that 0-0 draw away against Chelsea. Leicester, meanwhile, losing at home against Arsenal. Uh, Chelsea in fifth. Liverpool with their first win in five Premier League matches uh, to move to sixth in the table. Uh, we'll kick off, shall we, uh, with Chelsea against Manchester United. This was a dreadful, horrible spectacle of a game. As we welcome in uh, Frank Leboeuf, Nathan Anua and uh, Jürgen still with us. Uh, Nathan, this was terrible. Horrible match. And what was interesting oh, is that the most important thing we're talking about is a penalty decision, which was controversial, which you could talk about. But what's made this more interesting is the comments that we've heard from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer after the game. And just in a bite-sized way, he came out and said, well, Luke Shaw actually said it before, that the referee told Harry Maguire he couldn't give the penalty because it would have caused too much of a fuss. It would have been too controversial. Ole then was asked about it, doubled down on that, and also then went on to blame the Chelsea website for bringing to the attention of the officials that Harry Maguire needs to be kept a special eye on. Um, this all sounds ridiculous Twitter conspiracy theory being played out in a real footballing world. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And as a blue, I'm quite enjoying it. I think <laughs> for me, it, it was a penalty. I think it was a penalty. But I think some of the stuff which they're saying around sort of referees being pressured and so on, I don't really buy into that. I don't buy into it at all. Because I think once you start believing things are going against you because people want City to win a title or whatever, I think you're, you're missing the point. I think if they played better today, they probably would have won the game. Uh, it's a nice smoke screen, isn't it, I suppose, Frank, overall to take away from what was a poor spectacle. Manchester United not really testing, Chelsea neither. However, when it comes to this penalty, where do you stand on the reaction after it as well? Well, first, um, you're right. It wasn't the, the best entertainment uh, <laughs> of, the, of the weekend uh, and from far. Uh, defensively, what is interesting, uh, the first half was uh, interesting also tactically, but it's true that offensively, we saw almost nothing. And we saw almost nothing because I think people are, I don't know, it's like they don't want to take any risk, like they're going to get uh, the, the draw and the nil-nil that we have every time two big teams are, are playing against each other. After... Well, I think there is a penalty. I think uh, um, Odson Odoi touches the, 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 the ball with his, uh, with his arm. I first thought it was Mason Greenwood, but uh, if you see on the replay, it's clear that he touches. So I don't know why the ref doesn't give a penalty, which doesn't mean that Manchester United would have won the game because I think we, you are like an hour and 10 minutes before the end of the game. Uh, and, and that's completely stupid what he said after, especially saying it to the Manchester United captain very loudly to make sure that everybody is going gonna, is gonna to hear it. So you're going to create another sto a story uh, the other way around. So not s saying that you're not giving a penalty because people are going to talk about it. You, of course, create a bad story. What a mess. It, it's an absolute mess. It, it, it really is on, on so many levels. First of all, let, let's just, uh, Sydney, as we sit here, as far as we know, the referee said something to Harry Maguire that's been repeated by Shaw and then Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. We're not exactly sure what the referee said in his own words. We haven't heard from Harry Maguire, at least I haven't, in his words as to what the referee said. So now we'd be taking this as, as a kind like of... telephone back it, it's, it, it, it really is ri ridiculous. While I thought it was a penalty, I could see why there's doubt, or doubt maybe came into the referee's mind, and then it comes down to, to interpretation. All that being said, this was a dour game, as you rightly point out. Neither team did enough to warrant three points. And more amazingly for me, especially somebody who's played football through the 90s, when Manchester United under Sir Alex Ferguson were so dominant, and there was nobody better at influencing officials, the opposite team's managers, the opponents, that's Alex Ferguson, to now sit here and listen to a current Manchester United manager complain about what Chelsea have on their website. That, this really is turning into comic book stuff. When, when, when this is what we're discussing, when, we are, uh, when we're discussing the two of the biggest clubs in, in, in world football and the most dour of 90 minutes that, that we, we are yet to witness. <laughs> Jürgen, what do you make of it all? <laughs> uh, I had, had a coach at one point, uh, uh, Otto Rehagli, always said, you know, whatever you say before, during and after the game on game day is irrelevant. Is, uh, because of, there are so many emotions into it. There's so, 
so much at stake, you know, don't take it too seriously. And it's obviously stuff that comes out of their mouth right after the game and, and they look at those images and, and both coaches today know exactly that they, they hadn't had their, their best day and, uh, and none of the teams deserved uh, three points in that game today between Chelsea and, and Man United. So o overall, I think um, Man United is better off with that tie because they're trying to keep them at a distance. It's all about the Champions League spots now because Man City already ran away. They, mm. they have the title already pretty much um, yeah, on their hands. And uh, uh, so all these things, you know, I think nobody talks about it tomorrow anymore. The, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the problem is, like, this isn't an anomaly. In, in these big six matches we've seen all season, they have been forgettable once the full-time whistle has gone. You know, Manchester United have featured in, in, in five of these games. I, I, I just said that this game was the most dour we're ever to see and likely to see. I stand corrected. There's quite a few on that list yeah, where that were just as bad. Any of these Goodness like, me, those shocking them. As you look at look down this list, those games were <laughs> just as awful as this one. Goodness uh, me. Uh, uh, Nathan, five of them have involved Manchester United. How much would we read into that? <laughs> it depends. It depends if you're a United fan or not. I was recently speaking to one of my friends about that exact <laughs> thing. And he's saying, yeah, they always set up to not lose now. This is a different Manchester United, but. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I guess for me, if you're playing a game at the top of the league, you'd like to think that the two teams would be quite evenly matched. Obviously, we hope for goals because there's a lot of attacking talent on the field. But you're right. The games have been very, very boring. And it's, it's a shame because we, we still feel like we've got an exciting game coming up. But to be let down as many times as we have been recently, it really is a shame. Frank, how much do you attribute this to the lack of fans in the stadium where it's easier to, not, to, to play to not lose than play to try and win? I know a, a big amount. I mean, I mean, mm. it's uh, it's for me sure that with fans, all those games would have would have been different. And because of the pressure that you have, because of the uh, the push that you can get from the fans, you know, when you play at home, and um, and um, and you know, the, the, the different atmosphere that you can get during the game, and um, and that's for sure that those draws uh, just show us that the pandemic have touched the football dramatically. In, in terms of level, big clubs um, don't produce what we are expecting. We make those games being big games where we don't have the atmosphere run, we don't have therefore the pressure, therefore we don't have the results. And that's simple as that. So we need the fans as soon as possible back into stadiums to make sure that we have big games. That's for sure. I, I disagree. I, I think even when we had fans, you, you saw so many... Uh, of these, of the big teams coming up against each other, and and we have these kind of dour affairs, with or without fans. We've we've had to endure that over the last couple of seasons. The one thing that jumps out at me, and, and you talk about Manchester United, uh, and I think in in the sixth game, which which was um, Chelsea Spurs, you have teams in Manchester United and Spurs who are very much counter-attacking teams and pretty much don't know how to and don't try to play anywhere else. When you have an opponent. In this instance, Chelsea, um, who just who, whose focus is on taking away that counter-attacking threat, you get these you get exactly these types of games. United, who don't offer much more, a team who are more worried about the counter-attack than their their own um, uh, attacking prowess, uh, and you get 90 minutes that you'd much rather forget. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.